These 16 blocks have been very controversial in the Minecraft building community. Some people hate them, some people love them. So today I'm here to see how many genuine uses the glazed terracotta set of blocks can have. Because honestly, I think they're some of the hardest blocks to build with and design with in this game. So I've really given it my best shot in this world at trying to come up with some interesting and unique uses for glazed terracotta. Now I gotta preface this video with, this is me stretching myself to deliberately come up with some ideas for this block because yes they are quite hard to work with especially when you're trying to come up with little uh, ideas and designs like this but I think I have come up with some quite interesting stuff that might change your ideas on how you might use these blocks in your own builds for example these wall designs here which I quite like this is kind of emulating like textured wallpaper that you'd see in real life and it creates those nice kind of stripes that are going across there and that's simply by like rotating the block in different ways you can kind of create the stripes and it still confuses me sometimes there but yeah it creates those like diagonal stripes which I quite like and I think depending on the style of build you're going for these could create some nice interesting textures for your walls rather than just having like a plain blank wall it might be nice to have it filled up with some kind of interesting design like this I could see this one being used in some kind of like arcade or something you know it's got that vibe to it you know the kind of zigzaggy patterns here's another one working with the same idea we're using the light grey glazed terracotta here and it's got that line going through it's got like this wavy pattern I do quite like that and yeah another similar idea using those diagonal stripes this is the black glazed terracotta and again same idea I really like this one in particular it's got a very subtle like wavy pattern to it like it's very subtle and this one here that might fit in a very like cutesy type build I quite like the repeating pattern here it's kind of like got the crisscross and it all tiles and stuff I, I, I do really like that and I did come up with a couple of other designs you can do with a cherry blossom. This is simply just like alternating which way it's going, which creates that like zigzag effect to it and just putting that in strips. And then this one, which kind of has it alternating, but in a different way. These are the first builds I came up with for this video. And I think they are a pretty good use of the glazed terracotta. But obviously that would depend on what kind of build you're doing. So I've shown you some wallpaper designs now. Let's move on to flooring. One difficulty people have with these blocks in particular is that they are only a corner of the full pattern. To get the full pattern, you have to tile them. And they tile in a two by two pattern, which is quite difficult because a lot of people People don't like to build on an even number. People generally, and I also prefer to build on an odd number, so you have an odd number center. But with these, it's quite difficult to have that odd number center. This flooring design here has a two block center. So whatever place you're putting this in would have to accommodate for that by having the two block center. It's all about finding the different patterns in the blocks and how they all like connect together. When you look at it like this, it can look a little bit busy, but looking at it from a higher up vantage point, you do start to see those shapes emerge there. And again, this is a kind of texture that you can't really get with other blocks because these blocks in particular are very, very busy and have a lot going on in them. So they are pretty good for flooring like this, where you want to have that kind of mosaic-y texture to it. I know it won't be to everyone's taste, but I do quite like this idea. And even if you haven't liked these designs so far, the whole point of this video for me was to try and find new ways to use these blocks and see if these blocks are as bad as people say they are. So here I've got a couple of other smaller flooring designs. Maybe if you're building like a smaller room, you could have something like this. And, and an interesting thing you could do is you can make it a three by three pattern by having some other types of blocks in the middle. Obviously, if you're just building with the glazed terracotta block itself, it's quite hard to get like a three by three pattern to look good. They are designed in such a way that they're designed for a two by two pattern. But having some kind of block in the middle, in this case I chose a brown block like the stripped spruce, can make it look a bit more interesting and if you are building in a floor, the kind of wooden beams going across is quite realistic, I think. But you could probably also have something like the brown terracotta or even the grey terracotta here. But I do quite like how the colour of the stripped spruce matches quite well. In the centre here, I've put a stripped warped stem because that kind of matches the blue colour. I wanted to have something that matched in that colour palette. And I think this flooring in particular is quite effective. Again, it can be a little bit busy just because of the texturing of the glazed terracotta blocks, but personally, 
Personally, I think this is an interesting way to use them. And another technique I found for a good centerpiece block is you can use these shulker boxes. The top texture of a shulker box is quite interesting and like very like ornate and it's got a lot of detail there with that like trim going around the edge. Building with these blocks is definitely finding like other colors that complement them, especially because most of the glazed terracotta blocks have multiple colors in. This is the brown one, but it has some blue in there. Another technique here for the brown glazed terracotta is to have a centerpiece to it. So you've got the stripped spruce as kind of a centerpiece and then the top texture for the log in the middle as the very center of the room. And then you can just have the kind of spike part of the brown glazed terracotta just coming off in the four directions. And it creates those diagonal lines coming off there, which I think is quite interesting. Something else you could do is you could always do something like this where you have the kind of star texture. That is quite interesting too. It's kind of wrapping round and then you still got the that one pointing outwards. It's all kind of going in the same direction still. Very interesting. Hmm. I like that. Can you tell that I like the brown glazed terracotta specifically? I think it's probably my favorite of all the, the glazed terracotta blocks. Again, we've got like more three by three patterns, but this is a more like tileable one. And then you can put whatever block you want in the center there as the centerpiece to the design here. Got a few examples here. Obviously we've got the stripped spruce, which I quite like, but you can also use the brown shulker box, which is nice. I found that the exposed variety of copper is quite a good match for the color here. It's a lot more subtle than the other blocks and it does fit in the color palette a, a bit better, I think. You could have these three by three designs in each corner here if you wanted to have that, again, have that crisscross pattern in the middle. But yeah, it's all about experimentation and there is quite a few different variations you can do with these blocks. Yeah, so as I put on this sign here, they are quite hard to use in odd numbered builds, but there are ways that you can fit them in. Like I do really like this design. It's, it's nice and red. You know, you want like a kind of regal royal interior. This is quite nice. Like, like imagine having this tiled across like your entire floor. That would be quite an interesting little pattern there. And I think it does beat having just a plain block flooring. Equally, any of these blocks could also fit in. And I've chosen the these yellow blocks in particular because I find that yellow and red go quite well together. The gold blocks in particular, I think, fit in quite well. And then the gray shulker box is quite nice. It kind of offsets all the red because it matches the color of the gray in the black gray terracotta. So many colors. It matches that color quite well. See, as you can see, with just like a couple of these glazed terracotta blocks, there are so many different designs and different like tweaks and details you can do. Jump into a creative world, play with these blocks. It's quite interesting to work with. And once you get the hang of it, you can get some interesting designs. Yes, another flooring design that I quite like. We've got the orange glazed terracotta, the light gray, and some other complementary blocks here. This texture in the middle I really like. I think it, again, it fits the whole very highly detailed vibe here. This is the bottom texture to the shulker box, which is something that I don't see people using very much. And I don't even think a lot of people have seen this texture because of just the nature of how shulker boxes are placed. The bottom texture of the shulker box is quite nice. It has a swirly pattern to it. And I do like these blocks, how you can kind of create this again, this like spiral pattern going round here with the light gray, how it kind of turns the corner there. And with the light gray here and the line, which also has that kind of like turning the corner effect, it has the kind of line going through. You can create these nice, interesting, like swirly, like wavy patterns. And you simply just build it once and have them going in strips. And what I've done here is I've done one going in one direction and then another going in the other direction. And again, it's quite tricky to get them placed right at first, but you just got to kind of get used to it and then, then you do kind of get it down and then you just keep going like that and eventually get a kind of interesting pattern like that and it does create some nice interesting shapes. And with these same blocks here, you can create these other interesting tiled patterns, which again, interesting unique shapes that you don't normally see in walls and flooring like this. And the benefit of something like this is that they can be infinitely tiled in whatever direction you want them to go in, so they can fill up whatever amount of space you want them to. If you want to have that kind of hyper detailed industrial look, this block on the wall could be quite interesting. I know it kind of stands out 
out quite a bit in this particular example, but if you had this in an actual room with a, a lot of other details in the room, you know, you're going for that really hyper detailed, you know, with a lot of clutter in there, this is quite effective as a little like pipe running through the wall. This is probably my favorite like mosaic flooring I've done. This is actually the mosaic flooring that I did in my survival base. And I spent a lot of time just kind of getting all the blocks right in there and you know, seeing what goes together. Huh, I think I actually like that design better for the brown bit there. The whole zigzag I think kind of fits together a little bit better. I might have to change that in my actual survival base. Last but not least for the flooring designs here, this is a design for a kind of road, but I don't really think it works very well. This is an experiment I did that turned out not that good. I tried to use it in a kind of gradient design. When I laid it out like this, I thought it looked quite good. It kind of bridged the color gap in between those. But then when I laid it out, the glazed cotta definitely stood out a lot more. And I realized that there were definitely better blocks that you can use for a gradient like this. So for example, smooth basalt, that transitions a lot better, or even regular basalt. This is one of those times where I build something and then it just doesn't end up looking good. Like you have the idea in your head, you think, oh, that might look quite good. That might be an interesting use for this block. But it just turns out that there are way better blocks for this particular use case. Okay, I'm sure you're sick of flooring by now, so let's move on to some other types of ways you can use this. I think the glacier ricotta works quite well as a roofing material. You know, if you have a kind of town or city and you want it to have that kind of bright, like breezy atmosphere, I think having these like beautiful bright roofs is quite interesting. And these houses aren't like anything revolutionary, but it was just an example house I built to just give an example of how you can use this in a roof. And then I also built one here with the white glazed terracotta, which I think looks quite nice. I can imagine these being used in a little like Greek style port town, that kind of very bright kind of architecture. And I think roofs like this would work well in like a fantasy build style as well. And here we have some more of the glazed terracotta worked into a more old kind of stonework building. It's got that kind of dome shaped roof Roof, which I quite like. Definitely more of like an ancient style architecture here. For the roof we just kind of got a trim of the glazed terracotta going around there and for this in particular I haven't really paid attention to which way I'm placing them. It creates that like nice variation in there. And then in kind of the corners of the walls here I've added the grey glazed terracotta quite nice like corner piece to the wall there and they do complement the again the this highly detailed style that I'm going for you know with the the lodestone is a very very highly detailed block you know stuff like the cracked stone bricks has quite a lot of detail packed in there then on the inside we have like a mosaic -y type floor we're using the mud bricks but also the brown glazed terracotta is kind of a to kind of lead your eyes into the center it's got that nice arrow texture to it and now this block, the magenta glazed terracotta. This is a block that some people really, really hate. And I think obviously this is not meant to be a building block. You cannot use this in a build and have it look good, but that's not what I would use this block for at all. So I've come up with some nice color palettes that match it here. We've got the purple blocks. We've got pink concrete. We've got magenta concrete and pink terracotta. So here we have a hallway, you know, a regular kind of hallway. I, I do quite like this build style, but the actual magenta glazed terracotta is being used in the floor. Like imagine you had this in your base, maybe in like a, a multiplayer world, and you want to lead someone somewhere. You want to tell them, oh yeah, this is the way you need to go to reach the sorting system or something. You could have different paths going through that lead people with the arrows to a certain place. And it's not that obtrusive. It's just like in the floor there. I mean, you could have it in the ceiling as well, or maybe even in the walls. And it just kind of leads you in a certain direction. Very useful for multiplayer, very useful for telling people where to go, pointing people in a certain direction without using any signs. That one's quite nice. And then we've got another concept here. This is a concept specifically for like a nether hub. And the whole concept behind this use is that it's pointing you in the direction of a couple of farms. So imagine you have this in like a, a multiplayer world or even in your own single player world if you're particularly forgetful where your different builds are. So this is indicating that the gold farm is that way and the enderman farm is that way. Or maybe that's saying that the end portal is that way. I think that's a very like nice simple way of indicating where things are in your world. And that's how I would use this block. I would not use this as a building block. I would use it as a utility block, a useful block like this. It only really fits into 
a certain amount of color palettes, which is why I've used these particular blocks because using it in any other color palette than this, it really wouldn't fit in. That's an issue that I do have with this block. It only fits into very specific builds. This is a sign maybe you'd have on, again, on a multiplayer server. If you have like a shopping district or something, I'm thinking of like Hermitcraft style stuff here where you have a uh, different shops and an economy and stuff. And this is simply like an advertisement. We've got some redstone inside there that makes the sign flash. And I'm using the bright, bold nature of this block to deliberately stand out and catch your eye. If you're walking past this sign, I mean, you're gonna see the flashing lights and the animation there, but you're also gonna see the bright, bold pink arrows pointing you in the direction of whatever shop you're pointing towards. So that is another niche use for this to be deliberately bold and eye-catching. And now finally for this video, yes, this is these are the only builds I was able to come up with for these blocks. We have some interesting custom plants here. So I've been trying my hand a lot more recently at custom plants, because I think it's quite a fun thing to build. Like, and I'm nowhere near the best at doing these yet, but I, I'm getting, I'm trying to get a lot of practice in and I, I have been improving at these quite a bit. The glazed terracotta blocks in particular, a lot of them have these kind of floral patterns to them so they work quite well as like little flowers or little petals these ones in particular look a lot like roses and I think that was definitely intentional sheep stop eating my rose bush please very over the top very bright but I do like them I particularly like this one here that I've used the orange glazed terracotta in they're kind of like weird like almost like alien flowers almost and I, I do like building in that very alien style quite weird but quite interesting though they almost look like tasty, I kinda wanna, I kinda wanna eat them. We've got a more standard like rose here, which I think works very, very well with the glazed terracotta. And here we've got a dandelion or sunflower or, you know, some kind of yellow flower. And then finally, a very outdated use for this block, a cherry tree. We now have cherry trees in Minecraft, but I came up with this design actually before they were introduced into the game. <laughs> So it's kind of outdated now because we now have the fallen cherry leaves. We don't have to use the carpets anymore. And we have an actual cherry leaf block. But maybe when you're building your cherry trees, if you're building quite a big one, you could maybe vary it up a little bit by including some of these bigger leaf blocks in there. But honestly, we have a better solution to building this now, which is the actual cherry blossom leaves themselves. So that's it. Those are all the builds. To answer the question in the title of this video, is glazed terracotta actually good? Yes and no. I, I think it's a very interesting block and it can add a quite a bit of detail, but I think honestly it's one of the hardest blocks in the game to use in your builds. And I'm not saying that lightly, I, I, I honestly think this block is very, very hard to use. Yeah, it's, it's difficult and I don't blame you if you think these blocks are just bad because they're hard to use. I think for niche uses, they're good and for small details, they can also be good too. But overall, I couldn't come up with that many builds using them. But overall, they're a very interesting block to experiment with and I definitely encourage you to jump into your own creative world and try out some designs for them. Thank you for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Subscribe if you'd love to see more stuff like this because I'd love experimenting with the different blocks in Minecraft. And also I have a Patreon and a Ko-Fi if you want to help support me. Thank you for watching and I will see you in whatever the next video is.